this is about someone or people or a group of people or someone, um, <laughs> a couple people. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to do a pretty large book haul for you guys. I think this is going to be the last book haul of the year. Oh, I don't think. I know it's going to be the last book haul that I film for the year. What I meant to say is I think I'm not going to buy any more books before the end of the year. I hope. There's only a few weeks left uh, and I think I can be strong enough not to order or buy anything. Although we are going to Barnes & Noble next week. But I'm going to try not to buy anything that I don't need. Anyways, uh, so this is like a mix of book haul. I have stuff that I got from the library yesterday and stuff I ordered at the end of November and then stuff I ordered in December. So I can't really call it like a monthly book haul. It's just a bunch of books and library books that I've gotten in the last few weeks. And the stack is really large and so I need to just haul these. Uh, and show them to you guys because I am excited, but I can't I can't let the stack get any bigger before I share what I have. So I'm just going to start grabbing stuff and showing you guys. The first book that I want to show you is Three Women by Lisa Tadeo or T Tadeo. And this is a book I automatically bought after I saw it actually on Twitter. Amanda Overbooked uh, shared it and then how much she loved it. And so I was curious about it and I went and read the synopsis and like immediately went to Amazon and clicked buy. I mean, it was just an automatic buy. Now I can't really remember what it's about, but it's a nonfiction book about three women. And I'm just going to peek in the cover here because it's been a few weeks since I bought it. And I know that it, I liked the synopsis, but I now I can't, <laughs> I can't remember it at all. So it says desire is we've never seen it before. A riveting, a riveting. A riveting true story about the sex lives of three real American women based on nearly a decade of reporting. Oh, let's see. It says it thrills us and torments us. It controls our thoughts, destroys our lives, and it's all we live for. What is it? Yet we almost never speak of it. And as a buried force in our lives, desire remains largely unexplored until now. Over the past eight years, journalist Lisa Tadeo has driven across the country six times to embed herself with ordinary women from different regions and backgrounds. The result, Three Women, is the deepest nonfiction portrait of desire ever written and one of the most celebrated books of the year. So you're following the story of three different real women in North America. And what is it? it like their, their love lives? their sex lives, their desires. Um, huh. I don't know. Like this just, this sounded so interesting to me. Like just any expo, any nonfiction, well, fiction too, but like nonfiction books that ex, yeah, like sex and desire and like more forbidden topics or what has been historically forbidden topics. I really like exploring, uh, I realized. And so this just, I don't know, it intrigued me. It sounded really interesting. And then again, like the glowing reviews that I saw, um, plus the synopsis, I just had to automatically buy it. So I don't know a ton of about it, about it, except for it sounds pretty cool. And I'm excited to read it at some point, probably not before the end of this year, but uh, I hope to review, review this for you guys soon and let you know, or I might save it for Feminist Lit February, which is a thing that I didn't know about, but uh, I might have to save it for that. The next book that I bought was uh, How to Raise the Perfect Dog Through Puppyhood and Beyond by Caesar Milan. It says, and with, with Melissa Jo Pelter. Uh, I bought, what fell out of that? Uh, I bought this uh, on a whim, sort of from Thrift Books. Uh, it's got the little sticker on it. Uh, if you guys have Disney Plus, I was really excited <laughs> to discover that The Dog Whisperer is on Disney Plus. And I am a huge fan of The Dog Whisperer. I know he's controversial. I've read it all. I've seen it. I've explored that and still think he's great. And so I bought uh, this book of his. I have a dog who is still a puppy. She's like eight months old. So I thought this would be valuable, if anything, like just for the stories in it and I don't know, training stuff. I just was interested and it was really cheap, so I bought it. Let's see. The next book that I bought, apparently it was um, in a thrift books order as well, was Meg by Steve Alton. And from what I remember about this book, this is about, let me just pick at the sticker while I talk about it. This is about 
someone or people or a group of people or someone, um, <laughs> a couple people diving deep into the ocean and discovering basically a dis um, an extinct dinosaur sea creature that's really terrifying. Uh, so I think Meg is like short for Megalodon. I think I got that right. Yeah, like a prehistoric thing that they discover deep in the ocean. And this is, yeah, supposed to be pretty thrilling and sort of creepy. And I don't know, a deep sea, uh, slightly scary or anxiety inducing books just sounded pretty fun to read in the winter. So moving right along, I'm just going to get right into the library books I just picked up yesterday. Uh, the first one that I got was Speak by Laurie Hulse Anderson. And I actually read her book like a month ago, The Fever, The Fever and it had a year, like it was about the yellow fever. Now I can't remember what it's called. I actually didn't really like that, but I want to pick this one up because the synopsis of this one, um, when I've heard about it in the past, sounds like something I'd be interested in. But this is a YA about a girl who's keeping a secret about being, from what I remember, sexually assaulted. Let's see. It doesn't really like give you a clue on the back, but when I read about it, um, when I read about it online somewhere, it's about a sexual assault, I think. I don't know. It just sounds intriguing and dark. And I like, like I said before, I like books that, exp I don't know. I like books that explore um, dark stuff. I guess I just like dark stuff. I don't know. But the librarian, um, when I was checking this out, she said this was good. She said it was pretty hard um, to read, but she thought that it was good and important. The next book I got was Unbecoming by Jenny Downham. And it just says three women, three generations, three secrets. And apparently they all have red hair. And I just thought, uh, first of all, the cover just caught my attention. I thought it was pretty. I don't really know what it's about, but it sounds like something I might be interested in. Like I was just kind of pulling stuff off the shelf and not trying to think too much or consult Goodreads too much before I grabbed these books. Um, Yesterday, I was just kind of, kind of like in a whim mood, just grabbing things. But let's see. This says, Katie is 17 and in love with someone whose identity she's afraid to reveal. That's the first thing that caught my attention. Caroline, Katie's mother, is uptight, worn out, and about to find the past catching up with her. And then Mary, Katie's grandmother, suffer suffers from Alzheimer's and suddenly appears after years of mysterious absence. So it's kind of like... I don't know, it seems like a story that's weaving in like these three generations of women and what they're going through in their life and just sounds interesting. And I wanna try to read it. The next thing I got, I've seen at the library multiple times and I finally felt brave enough to pick it up. But this is Jane Eyre, um, the graphic novel version of it by Charlotte Bronte. And I can't remember, I think that I read Jane Eyre, like the real book. Um, in high school and I remember I didn't hate it but I also don't remember that much about it it also wasn't like super memorable for me uh, so I've kind of wanted to explore some of the classics again although they do intimidate and scare me a little bit not because I don't know I'm just scared I'm gonna be bored I guess but I thought this was a good jumping off point just to try to see just to see if that's something I want to do I've been thinking about it but I don't want to force myself to do it either if I'm just not interested, you know, but I thought this was an interesting thing, like just turning older books into a new graphic novel type form. Uh, so I'm going to try to read this and see if I like it in graphic novel form. And if I do, then maybe that'll give me the courage to move on to the big girl books. I don't know. What do I want to show you next? I want to show you this. Uh, I also picked up, this was like in the new section where they have the new books uh, in the library, but I also picked up Myths, Legends, and Sacred Stories, a visual encyclopedia, and it's a DK book, and it was just so pretty and so gorgeous, and when I flipped through it, I mean, I just want to buy it. I want to, a lot of stuff falling out of books. I just want to buy it or steal it from the library. Just kidding, I'm not going to steal it. Oh, I just thought this would be fun to read with my kids. I really like, um, I really like myths and creation stories and different mythology and, and different religions and stuff around the world. I really, I like, uh, I like especially religions with multiple deities to explore because I just think that's such an interesting concept and nothing, it's not something I was familiar with um, growing up, but it has, it has it broken down by continent 
It has Europe, Asia, Africa, the Americas, and Oceana. And I just thought this would be a fun, like, bedtime read with my children. Let's see, I have two more library books here. I picked up this one. It's called How to Know God, The Soul's Journey into the Mystery of Mysteries by Deepak Chopra. And this name is familiar to me, although I don't know exactly who that is. But this is supposed to be about... Um, an exploration of the idea that everyone can have the direct experience of divinity. Uh, according to Chopra, the brain is hardwired to know God. And more stuff about that that just sounds really cool. The reason I got this, I've seen it at the library multiple times but never bothered, is because I do go see a therapist and we were covering some things last week. And she mentioned that humans are unique because we do have a need to connect ourselves to... We have a spiritual need, and that doesn't necessarily mean you need to believe in a God or be part of a certain religion. It just means you need to believe in something greater than yourself, even if that greater thing is just being connected to nature and uh, the universe and just feeling like you're part of something bigger. I'm probably butchering her words, but I'm trying to remember what she said and, and explain it in my layman's terms. But yeah, basically, like we have this need to be part of something, even if it's just, you know, like believing like, yeah, we're made from stardust and that's so cool because it just means we're part of the earth and, and we're all just together in this, me and the fish and the frogs and the trees, you know, we're all the same and different and wonderful. I don't know. Just thought that would be a fun thing to explore. The next book I'm super excited about. I saw it in the new book section again, and that's the first place I go in the library is check out what they have new and what they're um, have just gotten in and bought and stuff. And this is a book I mentioned in a few videos past about something that I really wanted to read. It was a new release. And that is Before and After by Judy Christie and Lisa Wingate. Uh, by this, It's the same author that wrote Before We Were Yours, which was one of my favorite reads, I think, from last year. But it's the incredible real-life stories of orphans who survived the Tennessee Children's Home Society. So her book Before We Were Yours was kind of following, like, Following her family of children that were taken um, without consent from their parents and basically like this Tennessee Children's Home Society uh, would kidnap poor kids and stuff and sell them or adopt them out but really they they were selling them for just a lot of cash to uh, wealthy people that wanted to have children and couldn't and this is like a continuation of that and I suppose like maybe this is getting into different individual stories. Like maybe she sought some people out that um, survived the Ch Tennessee Children's Home Society. Uh, so I'm just super excited about this because I want to read this and I don't know why I didn't go ahead and buy it uh, when it came out. But I guess it's good that I didn't because my library got it. And so now I get to read it for free and I don't have to buy it unless I really want to. So the next thing that I'm going to get into here, that was like my first half of the book haul. And the next half his books that I bought for Black Friday. There's not a name on this? Well, it's this box right here and it's from Book Outlet uh, because now I have a new place to buy books that's exciting. But I took advantage of their Black Friday sale and I also had a $10 credit. So combining that, I got quite a few books for pretty cheap. I think I got... Um, well, I'll just have to count them. I don't know. I'm cutting into this and I think I remember now, I think I spent somewhere in the realm of, it was 25 bucks. I'm pretty sure I spent 25 bucks. So that was, you know, after I got the discounts and everything. So we're gonna count these books together because I actually, the reason I'm unboxing this just with you guys is because I did buy it on Black Friday and it's been several weeks since then. And I've just kept it like as a mysterious little, box and gave my myself a chance to forget what I bought. Um, so I thought it'd be exciting kind of rediscovering and remembering what I bought. Uh, and then I'll count them and I'll show you how many books that I got for 25 bucks. The first thing that I got apparently was Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. And a lot of these I didn't pre-plan to buy. I just searched through the site, read synopsis and, um, and then bought because they sounded good. And I don't even remember what this is about, but Stephen King says I should read it because it's bloody brilliant is what he said. 
Uh, let's see. It says, meet Louise. She is a hardworking single mom stuck in a rut. One rare night out, she meets a man in a bar and the sparks fly. Though he leaves after they kiss, Louise is thrilled to have finally connected with someone. Let's see. Oh, and then when she goes to work, the man that she kissed at the bar is actually her, she goes to a new job. No, she goes to her regular job, but she has a new boss and her new boss is the guy that she kissed at the bar the night before. Now I'm remembering why I bought this. Oh, and he's married. Okay, so this sounds like, I think it's like, I don't remember what it is. Is it a thriller? I think it's probably a thriller. Oh yeah, so she's finding out about her new boss and him and his wife, like their marriage is really messed up in some way. Um, Cause it says she finds out that their marriage is very, very wrong. But how could she have ever imagined just how far a husband and wife might go to protect their secrets? So she's a threat to them because he decided he was married, but he was going to kiss someone at a bar. And then turns out he works with her. The next one that I bought, so that's book number one. The next one I bought was The Perfect Nanny by Layla Slamani. That's how you pronounce her name. And uh, let's see. This one I know is a thriller. I think it's, I'm not even going to try to remember what it's about, but it's about... Let's see, woman who decides to go back to work after having children. So they're looking for the perfect nanny to watch their precious children. But as the couple and the nanny become more dependent on one another, jealousy, resentment, and suspicions mount, shattering the idyllic tableau. Building tension with every page, the perfect nanny is a compulsive, riveting, bravely observed exploration of power, class, race, domestic, domesticity, and motherhood. Oh, and this is a debut novel. This is her first novel. Yeah, I just, I've seen this popping around a lot and I don't know, it just sounded pretty thrillery and um, maybe slightly messed up and scary. I don't know. Sound, it sounds cool though. So that's book number two. Let me just see what else that I got. Ooh, this one. I remember this one um, liking it and wanting it. Uh, let's see, this one's called Her One Mistake by Heidi Perks. It says, what's a little lie between friends? What is it? I think this is about a woman who loses her children or both of them die or something like that. So let me get in here and see if I'm right. Uh, let's, oh, oh, it's someone that was babysitting. I'm getting it mixed up with another book. Charlotte was supposed to be looking after the children. She swears she was. She only took her eyes off them for one moment, but when her three kids are all safe and sound at the school fair and Alice, her best friend, Harriet's daughter, is nowhere to be found, Charlotte panics. So she was watching someone's kids or kid and lost one. Oh yeah so she was watching her friend's kids her friend's kid and she lost her kid that's what that's about I think it says it's a is it a psychological thriller maybe I don't know where can you go find in the book like where where the genre of a book is because I always just look it up on Goodreads yeah now I remember why I got that one. So book number three, let's see what the next one is. Goodbye, sweet girl. I don't remember buying this one at all. A Story of Domestic Violence and Survival by Kelly Sunberg. Okay, so that makes sense why I bought this. Domestic violence is another intriguing subject for me, uh, but I can't remember what this is about. I think this is a fiction, right? No, this is a memoir. Oh, so this Kelly Sunberg has like, she was in a domestically violent relationship. Um, she didn't know his true nature when she fell in love. Took her a decade to ultimately accept the partnership she desired could not work with such a broken man. In her remarkable book, she offers an intimate record of the joys and terrors that accompanied her difficult awakening and present presents a haunting, heartbreaking glimpse into why women remain too long in dangerous relationships. Yes, now I remember why I got this. So yeah, this is a nonfiction memoir about being in a, uh, a violent relationship with someone. So that was book number four. Let's see, the next book I got was, oh, I didn't look up how to pronounce this first. This is Malaka, Malakai, maybe? Uh, I think it's... I think it's like in a Hawaiian book. Let's see, by Alan Brennert. And this is about a 17-year-old Hawaiian girl who dreams of visiting far-off lands. Um, then one day, a rose-colored mark appears on her skin and those dreams are stolen from her. Oh, she has leprosy. 
I wonder what time period this takes part in. Uh, so yeah, this is about her getting torn away from her family, I guess, for having leprosy and being sent somewhere else. So yeah, now I remember I picked that up and why? I don't know. Just thought it sounded cool. Um, not cool that she has leprosy, but like a cool story concept. That was book number five. The next one I got, uh, is Beauty Sick by Renee Ingel Ingelm. Uh, how the cultural obsession with appearance hurts girls and women. So this is nonfiction, obviously. I think the cover pretty much covers what this is about. And it's an interesting subject matter and it's something I want to learn more about. I like these books because, or these types of books, because I am always curious to explore how I could possibly be being influenced without even realizing it. Like, I'm not... I haven't got special mind powers that would make me not as easily influenced as anyone else out there. And, you know, it's so subtle sometimes and we can only go off like our human nature and our brain that gravitates towards certain things, you know, and marketing and, and stuff has figured out how to tap into primal parts of our brain that can be re-dialed to focus on something that's maybe not natural, but appeals to a natural part of our human psyche, basically. Uh, so it's just intriguing subject matter for me. Um, forgot I bought that. And now I'm like really happy and remember why I did. Uh, what was that? Book number six? There's only a couple left now. This one is American Heart by Laura Moriarty. She related to Leanne Moriarty? It was Laura Moriarty. She related to her? I don't remember what this is about at all. I don't remember buying this at all. Let's see. Let's just see what it is. Imagine a United States in which registries and detainment camps for Muslim Americans are reality. Oh, so like a dystopian. 15-year-old Sarah Mary Williams of Hannibal, Missouri lives in this world and though she has strong opinions on almost everything, she isn't concerned with the internments because she doesn't know any Muslims. It says Harper Teen, so I wonder if this is a YA. Uh, it might be. This might be a YA. Oh, okay. It's not saying that Laura Moriarty is related at all to Leanne Moriarty. So yeah, I think that pretty much covers the synopsis of that. Like I don't need to read like the other two paragraphs of it. So yeah, this, this girl, um, she's living in the United States where they have decided to round up Muslims and put them in detainment camps. Uh, sounds really reminiscent of World War II, like the Japanese American detainment camps, but she doesn't really, she isn't really paying attention, I guess, because it's not affecting her. She doesn't know any Muslims and she's not Muslim. So it's just the easy thing to overlook. So obviously this is some commentary on, uh, present day stuff that's going on and how, you know, what I get from that is, uh, if it ain't me, it ain't someone that I love, then moving on though, I also got Breaking Butterflies by M. Angela, and July, maybe, uh, it says like a moth to a flame. Again, this is another one I don't remember what it's about at all. Sphinxy and Cadence promise to each other in childhood. Oh, so it's like arranged marriage, maybe? Cadence is brilliant, charismatic, damaged, and diseased. When they were children, he scarred her with a knife. Now as his sickness spreads, he becomes increasingly demanding. The closest he can come to happiness, it seems, is when he's hurting her. She wants to be loyal but fears for her life. Only the ultimate sacrifice will give this love an ending. And this book apparently was written when this author uh, was only 18. Uh, so I'm assuming that this is probably a YA then since it was written by a teen, uh, I, I'm making assumptions here. I don't actually know. What what book number was that? That was, that was eight and I have one more. And this is a fun one that I picked up on a whim for me and my kids to share. Uh, this is How to Draw Cute Stuff by Angela Nguyen. Is that how you pronounce that last name? Draw anything and everything in the cutest style ever. And Obviously, I picked this up because I just thought it was super cute and it would be fun to draw with my kids like these cute, this cute like little style of drawing really cute animated cartoonish animals and people and stuff. Uh, I just thought it would be fun to add to our art collection and have fun with my kids doing that. So that is my book outlet haul. I think the combined, let's see, what, 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 
let's see how many books I have here. So I ended up buying nine new, brand new books from a book outlet for 25 bucks. That's not that bad. Um, woo. And then how many more books do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, so I just hauled 18 books. And that's a combination of books from thrift, uh, thriftbooks.com, book outlet, and then of course, library books. So that I think is going to be my last book haul of the year. I'm going to try not to buy any more before the end of the year or check out any more because obviously now my TBR is huge and I need to get to it. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this haul. Uh, let me know if you have, have any of these books or have read any of these books and your thoughts on them. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'll see you all again really soon.